what's up? In today's world, people often feel trapped in loneliness, claiming they are friendless or victims of the loneliness epidemic. While societal factors such as technology and the fast-paced living can contribute to isolation, many people often overlook the crucial element, themselves. The failure to look within, to look inward, to assess personal flaws is one of the greatest barriers to forming meaningful relationships. Friendships thrive off of mutual respect, vulnerability, and growth, yet many individuals fail to recognize that their own insecurities, fears, or habits can stand in the way. Some people project their inner struggles onto others, assuming that their loneliness is the fault of external circumstances. They may be quick to criticize others for being unreliable, judgmental, or distant without reflecting on whether they exhibit the same traits. This inability to confront their own flaws prevents the type of self-awareness necessary for fostering authentic connections. For instance, someone might complain that their friends never check in on them, but they fail to realize that they rarely initiate communication themselves. This creates a one-sided relationship where they expect more than they give. Similarly, individuals who hold grudges or struggle with trust may unwittingly push potential friends away. Assuming the worst about their intentions, rather than addressing their own fear of abandonment or rejection. Instead, blaming others for being distant or unkind. But in this video, we're going to point out some flaws for people who always claim that they are quote unquote friendless. For instance, Drake recently went on a light skin tirade where he once again, for the 10th year in a row, talked about not having friends, not having genuine connections, and then he asked the DJ to play Beyonce's Me, Myself, and I. One thing about nostalgia, one thing about nostalgia this party here, my real friends are definitely in the building. But I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna come to a point in life where people you thought were friends or people you thought were close to you, they might switch up, they might try and move funny with you, they might stab you in the back, they might do a lot of things to you. You'll come to that realization, wherever you're at in life, you've probably been there and you'll be there again, that's how life is. But look, sometimes it's you and you alone by yourself. Sometimes it's you alone with your thoughts. Sometimes you, you know what? Play the song, go ahead. This man does not stop. Like, at all. I actually find it interesting. Drake is hitting a slight dip in popularity. Drake will always be popular. He'll always have his fan base. But this beef with Kendrick, it did highlight an insecurity that Drake has, which is that he doesn't feel like he has any real friends. Are you my friend? Are we like I think Drake has probably dealt with some things in the industry that turned him cold, which can explain his behavior a bit, but I do think that his behavior is linked to a minor insecurity he has with other men regarding his ego. Drake, he ain't gonna fight you, but he'll play dirty when it comes to women. And y'all know what money makes a bitch do, so his version of winning is I got your girl. He has a long history of it. I've talked about it in my Kendrick Lamar video of Drake's nasty habit of messing with other dudes girl. Like when Drake had sex with Lil Wayne's baby mom when he was in jail. In the book, there's a part in the book where you say that he came in and told you that he had smashed one of your girls. Oh, your girl when he yes. Well, oh, I wasn't worried about that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was just, you know, that's just how life go when you locked up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> When Tyga called Drake fake, so Drake responded by liking all of Black China's pictures and posting a picture of Kylie Jenner at his studio. When Drake and Meek started beefing because Meek thought Drake was dissing him in the Rico verse, well, come to find out, Drake had a ghostwriter, which was Quentin Miller. Meek allegedly got the information from DJ Drama, who at the time had issues with Drake because Drake slept with his ex wife, Summer P. Walker. When Drake mentioned Pusha T's wife, that's when things escalated to Pusha T dropping the bomb on Drake's child and his fake persona. Drake's obsession with Riri and constantly dissing her years later. Drake messing with Kim K. You know, I never fucked Kim, but I was like, but you acted 
like you did. You got bars that's like hidden hills, give your wife the chills. You doing all kind of, it's like somebody throwing a marble and hiding their hand or something like that. It's like you had all that's disrespectful. Y'all actually had this conversation. Oh, we had this conversation. And this is all, and to the point with Kim be like, I don't listen to this nigga no more. This nigga acting like he fucked. And like, we ain't never really, like, we, we never really had that conversation. He's like, oh, I never fucked Kim, right? No, but what about all the, did you ever DM her? Did you ever, you know what I'm saying? Everything else around it, you know? Cause it ain't about just the actual act of it. You know what I'm saying? So you could be sitting there like, did he, did he not? That's worse than if you, I would rather you did. And I just actually. <laughs> and Connie has said it himself. Not only will he diss you, but he will disrespect your household by getting close to the women in these guys' lives. Drake don't do a diss, like an outright diss song where it's a headshot. He's gonna, Set a set it up like war. You like know what I'm saying? Like where, and strategy, yeah, when right. people went to go get Hitler, they didn't go straight for Hitler. They set up fake tanks. They set right. this, they this. So he gonna do stuff like live five blocks down the street from you. DM what, what every. What he said crept through the light switch. That that is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You he gonna like go and you know DM every. Drake himself, he just moves like he doesn't even have friends. He walks around like he isn't loyal to anybody, then cries when niggas don't want to mess with him. Like, I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but the fact is really about bro code, and you constantly violate bro code. A lot of people want to talk about how they got burned and traumatized in the past, but the new people in your life don't got nothing to do with your past traumas. You gotta move like you have common sense because nobody cares about your problems. Drake lost half the industry. Not all of it is because he was winning for so long. Some of it is actually him. And these are the same people that constantly emphasize how good of a person they are, which can be true, but they also fail to acknowledge their shortcomings and how they were wrong in the situation. There's a clip of B. Simone and her friend Pretty V where B. Simone kind of crossed a boundary with Pretty V and tried to play it off. Never have I ever. <laughs> oh. I can't say that because I did it. Yeah, because she on my floor. Ew. Oh my God. She did. I thought it was an almond and I was cleaning up and it was a piece of poop. What happened? Are you serious right now? You know. But the end for you to repeat that. It's been on YouTube for three years. You're not that mad, bro. <laughs> did you have to say that? <laughs> it was the size of an almond. It was so gross. <laughs> you see how she gassing it? You brought it up. <laughs> you had to tell people that. <laughs> Shut up, man. No, I'm being d You had to tell people that or not. It's on YouTube, bro. It don't matter. It has a million views. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was, I went to be someone's house, and I had a doo-doo. So my thing is, I doodled in a cellar, but a little pet came out my booty, and it went on her ground. So for her to drag it in front of all these legends, this is embarrassing, but I would never do that. I don't do those games. I'm definitely and I'm too upset that you broke right now. Vina! I'm being Get so over it! It doesn't matter. She her. And you keep saying it again, and I already told you that I'm being dead Because oh, you had to tell people that. So let's move to the next subject. It's still on YouTube, It doesn't though. matter. The focal point of this clip is B. Simone crossing a boundary and playing it off as a joke. Because even if it's on YouTube and V admitted it, why keep egging it on? I mean, as a friend, you should be able to read the room when your friend is uncomfortable. These situations or jokes where it's brushed off as nothing serious are sometimes a red flag. Like Drake effing Lil Wayne's baby mom and not telling him, or B. Simone embarrassing her friend in front of legends like Lil Kim and Maya. That's just rude, and usually those are the people you have to watch out for. I myself, I used to have a friend that would try to embarrass me for quick laughs. She'd play it off as she was joking, but whenever she ran out of topics or wanted to try and be funny, she'd look at me as a target. Although I would feel some type of way, I usually just brush it off, but eventually true colors always come out. I may have brushed it off, but eventually it would happen again, and those moments are a wake-up call to how the person sees you. Honestly, it could really be a lack of respect because although they're buddy-buddy with you, a real friend won't ever try to embarrass you or talk down on you as jokes. There is a difference between playing those jokes to each other like, oh bitch, do you remember when you shit on the floor? Versus constantly egging on the situation with strangers. People often play victim without noticing their own bad traits. And of course, you're not always going to be friends with everybody forever. But I've seen quite a few videos of B. Simone and Drake playing the victim card and sometimes it's not always everybody else. And that's the problem. 
True friendship requires introspection. It calls for understanding that no one is perfect, including ourselves. People need to be willing to acknowledge their own shortcomings in order to build patience, while also intertwining empathy and trust that deep relationships demand. Until people look within and recognize their own flaws, they will continue to sabotage their chances of meaningful friendships, casting themselves in a cycle of loneliness. In other words, don't be a weirdo and cry wolf. Because sometimes, it really might just be you. Well, that concludes today's video. Make sure you comment your opinions down below and make sure you like and subscribe. Toodles!